Indeed, all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him. We celebrate Him. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil in our soul and from our sinful deeds. Those who are guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one can misguide them. Those who are not guided by Allah, there is no guide for them. I bear witness that there is no God, there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. O ye who believe, revere Allah as he should be revered and die not except as Muslims. I'm about to proceed. Welcome to the Islamic Society leading American Muslims, an organization established to invite people to learn about the true message of Islam and then to educate, empower, and nurture them in their spiritual growth. So we want to make it real clear to you that wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you're welcome. There's no castigation here. There's no indictment. There's no criticism. It's simply not allowed. If it happens, let me know, and I will take care of it. I know everybody's scared of me, right? <laughs> Such a scary looking guy. Um, but we do want to welcome you. We want you to be a part of our family. Make sure that while you're here, you take phone numbers. Guys take guys' numbers and girls take girls' numbers. Um, and develop relationships that will support you in your spiritual journey. A support network is very important, so I really encourage you to do that. I do want to share with you some announcements. Um, the first Ramadan Iftar, inshallah, will be June the 19th at 7 p.m., six miles up the road here at St. Luke's United Methodist Church. Um, we're still collecting these items. really helps our organization. If you give us your empty ink cartridge or toner cartridges from your computers and from your printers, etc., uh, printers, I mean, uh, we turn those in and we're able to get pretty much enough money to buy a lot of our office supplies with for the organization. Uh, we use coupons to buy the coffee with and paper plates and stuff like that to try to defray the cost so that the majority of the money can be spent doing dollar that we collect. Um, unbroken cell phones, if you have one stuck in a drawer, under a dresser, under the bed, in a shoe box, on top of the refrigerator collecting dust, if you bring it to us, that can be used for, in, for a victim of domestic violence uh, so that they can make 911 calls. So that's what we do with those. We collected over 700. If you are not on our group, remember all of the classes are Islam Inc. 411. If you talk to Basun, who's standing up over there in the corner, the one who comes an hour early every Sunday for years, makes the coffee, Cleans the place, mashallah. I pray that Allah rewards you with a long and healthy and happy life. The idea I I'm sorry. The invitations I sent out last week to the people that gave me their information, they have not accepted the invitation. It does go into spam, so please check your spam folders. Um, Sister Shazida uh, is the wife of a brother who, um, his name is Isa. Uh, no, he's not. Farhas, his son is Isa. Um, he used to work at Rollins College in the administrative department there. His wife was taken to the hospital yesterday morning, and while she was there, she was just having, uh, they thought, bronchitis. Um, and she actually flatlined while she was there, and she's currently in a coma. So. She's a very young woman, only 51 years of age. So please, please pray for Shazia. Um, please. Shazida, right? Okay. And also continue to pray for Kathy in her recovery and everything. Um, and my wife has something to say. Yeah, I just I would like to have a kind of a head count for the iftars during the month of Ramadan because we are catering it. 
and I need to know, I need to let the caterer know how many people are coming. So if um, people could come to me at the end and just say, well, I think I can make it, there's a possibility, I can let the caterer know that we're going to have 50 or 60 or however many people. I would appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, so last week I passed around note cards like this. And everybody made a physical and a spiritual goal. Those of you who did not get to do that, I want you to do that. Um, today at the end of class, I'll make an opportunity and time for you to do that. I want you to revisit your goal for a moment before we start the class. And I want you to visualize planting the goal in your heart. The same way that if you're a gardener, or you'd like to grow flowers or whatever, you have to put a seed in the dirt and then something very beautiful comes out of it. So I want you to give a little, just a moment of spiritual attention, looking inside yourself to the spiritual goal that you made. For those of you who weren't here, and by the way, is anyone here for the first time today? You've never been here before. Would you please introduce yourself? Uh, okay. My name is Julie. I work with Sarah. And I was curious from... Um, well, welcome, Julie. We're very happy to have you here. Um, I'm going to ask Naran, if you will, those who haven't made goals, go ahead and give this to them now so that you make spiritual goals. Welcome, Mohammed. Thank you, everyone. So, Sabria's doing her good missionary work out there. I'm really not. I think she gets the gold stars for bringing uh, more people than anybody, I think. Mashallah. Who is that? Sabria. Lady Mary. Before we get started today, I wanted to share something with you. I feel inspired to just read this to you. Um, and actually, before I read it to you, what have we been focusing on? Anybody, just share. What have you been getting out of the class so far? What have we been focusing on? Spiritual meaning of Ramadan. God. Ramadan, the spiritual meaning of Ramadan. God the heart of consciousness. God consciousness. God consciousness. Yes, Mason. The heart of Ramadan. The heart of Ramadan. Anybody else? Anger. Yes that we want to move away from that, right? Very good. So, I had the fortuitous blessing. This is my second set, I believe. The first set I had was a different color. But when I embraced Islam, uh, June the 27th will be 28 years ago. I'll be my 28th birthday. There was a bookstore in California, an esoteric spiritual bookstore called The Bodhi Tree. And I was deeply searching, and I went and I purchased these books. From Imam Ghazali, Iyya Ulum ad There are four volumes. They're not the most scholarly translated, but the meaning is very powerful. I could not have chosen better books in my entrance to Islam than these four books that I have probably read, I've taught on them, I've read them and read them and read them, in addition to the Quran, the Sirah, the Tafsir. So I just want to read just briefly from this, because this is the wisdom of a great, great scholar. Fast is one fourth of faith. As the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, fast is half of patience. And patience is half of faith. Of all the regulations of religion, fast keeps special connection with God. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, God says every good action except fast will be rewarded from 10 to 700 fold. 
but fast is only for my sake, and it is I who will reward for it. Allah says, those who are patient will be given rewards without measure. That means so amazing you can't even measure it. Infinite rewards. Fast is half of patience. Its reward transcends account. The excellence of fast is known from the following hadith. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, by one in whose and there is my life, the fragrance of the mouth of a fasting believer is dearer to Allah than the fragrance of musk. God says the fasting man gives up conjugal relationships, food and drink for my sake. So fast is kept only for my sake and it is I who will reward him for it. What is the key message of this paragraph? The fasting is for Allah. Fasting is for Allah, and who rewards for it? Yeah. Okay. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Paradise has got a gate named Rayyan. None except a fasting believer will enter paradise by that gate. There's a special gate in paradise." For those who fast according to the regulations and the conditions prescribed. We have been focusing a lot on the regulations and the conditions prescribed for Ramadan. Now, the conditions that I see, that I talk about a lot in class, is that we have moved away from the purification of the heart. We have moved away from trying to gain taqwa. We have moved away from trying to gain sabr, patience. And actually what we do is we spend the days in the month of Ramadan impatient because we are trying to feed so many people and we are trying to do it so extravagantly that we are fulfilling our desire. Oh, I want to have a great dinner party. And then I want to show some kind of television show afterwards. And then we will sit around and gossip and slander and backbite and make all the dirt that we can on our hearts. And then we will say, MashaAllah, I'm fasting for the sake of Allah. <laughs> my, 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 sounds like a contradiction to me. The Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said, there are two joys for a fasting believer. One joy at the time of breaking fast, and another joy at the time of meeting his Lord. It doesn't say that the greatest joy in the month of Ramadan is iftar. It says that the greatest joy for the fasting man is when he meets his Lord, or her, the fasting woman. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, everything has got a gateway. Fast is the gateway of worship. It's not the gateway to see how fast I can get to the front of the line, how much food I can eat, how much desserts I can eat, and how many articles I can write in the newspaper about Ramadan menus. What a concept. Let me invite my fellow non-Muslims to the masjid so they can see how we eat. Not how we fast for Allah. Not how we try to purify our heart. But how we eat. And how greedy we are to be the first one in line. And you say, oh, he's pumped up this morning. Not really. But I'm doing this because I'm praying that this year you will be conscious of these things and you will be aware of what it's doing to your soul if that's the path you're on. When the month of Ramadan comes, the gates of paradise are open and the gates of hell are shut up. 
devils are put in chains. And a proclaimer proclaims, O seeker of good. Are you seeking good or are you seeking food? O seeker of good, advance. O seeker of evil, come back. Allah says, eat and drink cheerfully for what you missed in, in past days. In other words, eat and drink cheerfully for what you were deprived of in your fasting days. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, God will make his angels vie with an ascetic saying, O oh, young man who has suppressed his passions, his desires, his whims, his compulsions, his impulses, hers as well, for my sake, and who has spent his youth for my sake, you are to me like some of my angels. The Prophet Muhammad said about a fasting person, God says, Oh my angels, look to my servants. He or she has given up their passions, their pleasures, their food and drink for my pleasure, not for their pleasure. Allah says, no soul knows what has been kept, concealed from him, pleasing to his eyes. This is the reward for what they have done. It has been said regarding the verse that this action was fasting for Allah. The patient will be given rewards without account. And this is from the Quran. It appears from this that rewards will be open for the fasting believers and they will not be kept for measurement as it is only for God. All worships are for Allah, but the honor of fasting is like that of the Kaaba. Do we treat it like that? Do we address our fasting every sunset when we make that intention on in our heart that I have the opportunity to touch the copper? Everything in the world has got a specialty. The specialty of fasting is forbearance and sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. As it is the action of the mind and secret from public eye. But all other actions fall within human eyes. Nobody sees fast except the law, as it is a secret action with sincere patience. Secondly, it is punishment for the enemy of God as the way of the devil's sexual passions and it increases through the help of food and drink. Sound a little familiar? You want to know where I'm getting some of my information? Perhaps you're hearing it. This is the core of everything that I'm teaching and where it's developed from. With hunger, especially when fast controls the devil, shuts his path and makes narrow his passage. Then its connection remains only with Allah. If the enemy of Allah is controlled, it will be helping Allah. Allah says if you help Allah, Allah will help you and will make your feet firm. Who is fasting for? Allah. So at the beginning, a servant will make efforts and then hope for reward of Allah. For this reason, Allah says, I will show certainly my path to those who strive hard in it. Fasting is striving hard in the path of Allah. For Allah, making sacrifice, not seeing how much extra you can do in that month. The extra that we're doing should be addressing our hearts, our rule. 
that spirit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala breathed into us, I will show certainly my path to those who strive. Allah says God does not change the conditions of the people unless they change their own condition. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do this month. In the, in the final days of the month of Sha'aban. Next Sunday we will only have three or four more days before Ramadan. This change is said to be due to increase of negative behavior if it's a destructive change. The devil moves in fertile ground and the way we fertilize the nafs is by eating, eating, eating and feeding our desires. That's enough reading today. I just wanted to give you a taste. Yes, sister. Oh, you were just yeah, scratching your ear. Okay. <laughs> so you, you mean that it is devil's job to make you eating, eating, eating? Well, if you are serving yourself, eating, 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 instead of trying to develop taqwa, yeah, yeah. then the more you eat, the more energy you have and the more you fulfill your desires, the shaitan is running in your veins. But shaitan is closed on the The shaitan is chained up. This is a mercy from Allah. Thank God. But he, every person was born with the shaitan. You have to control your desires. Nobody here, the day that Ramadan arrives, nobody's suddenly not going to have any bad thoughts. Nobody's suddenly going to not say, you're not going to go through 30 days and not say, I hate that. Or I hate this. Or I'm so angry with my husband. Or I'm so angry with my wife. Or I'm so angry with my children. Those ailments that you have in your heart are the shaitan running in you. I think so. They are. I definitely. No thinking about it. They definitely are. It's established fact. One, one, one question is from my Allah, I do myself. I say, Allah, why do you put shaitan in my uh, rugged, my blood vessel? Please take out from my body the shaitan, because when I'm praying, everything are coming in my head. So I can, I say in the middle of namaz, please Allah take the shaitan from my blood. I'm done. This is why we say, I seek refuge with the law from the accursed Satan. Julie, Julie has any questions? Julie, sorry, I'm, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. If I say a word and you don't know what it means, please raise your hand. Anybody that's here, please raise your hand. I don't want to be saying something you don't know what it means. And I get, I start talking, and sometimes I'm talking about 150 words a minute. And so when I get off like that, I need to be brought back. So put your hand up and ask me a question if you have it. So, the course and path of shaitan inside of our veins will be narrowed when we are fasting. And here's how I like to think about that. You see, even though the speed limit on most of I-4 in the main part of Orlando is how much? And don't say anything, Nareen. It's how much? 65. It's 50 and 55, right? But we have five lanes. So most people go... <laughs> 80, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, you feel pretty comfortable going 80 on I-4, don't I do? Let's just be for rental for snizzle. But now let's do this. This is supposed to be a race. It does say dry race. Let's all go 80 on one road, one lane. How would you like that? 
<laughs> yeah, you like that. Okay. <laughs> well, I was not thinking everybody would like that. But anyway, it would be a thrill. But how safe would it be? Do you think everybody would be able to go 80 if we have one lane instead of five? If it said so. But, okay, in, in reality, with Orlando traffic, mm -mm. if the veins, in this term, the lanes were narrowed, would we be able to move as fast? No. So I got 100,000 cars moving in five lanes. Now I'm going to have 100,000 cars. I'm going to move it in one lane. Can we move as fast? No. 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 If you're a New York driver, you can do better. Because, you know, Floridians, when they see any kind of emergency light, they all look. <laughs> you can see them. And then they have another wreck looking. In New York, we don't do that. You, you know, the emergency people, they handle that, and you drive. You get them out of the way. It's the weirdest thing. But you see how this veins of our body and how the shaitan can move. The more you eat, the more you expand the veins, he's just wide open. But when you start narrowing it, you're slowing down. That's like the idea of fasting. Muhammad sallallahu also said that fasting is a shield. What do shields do for us? Protect us. They protect us. It is a protection and that is consistent with what Allah said in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 183, Oh, you have attained to faith. Fasting is ordained for you as it was ordained for those before you so that you might remain conscious of God, so that you might attain taqwa, so that you might protect yourself spiritually. What are we protecting? We are protecting that fitra. That rule that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala breathed into your mother's womb and made you a soul. Think about it. Some disgusting fluids got together. Was there any life in those fluids? No. They were just fluids. And Allah breathed His rule. And that rule gave life to you. And that rule started working. And it always was calling you back to Allah. Even an atheist, they say, I don't believe in God. I tell you what you do. Watch them hit their thumb with a hammer and they'll say, God, help me. Maybe something else. <laughs> Fasting was prescribed upon us as it was prescribed on those before us in order that we may remain close to Allah that we attain taqwa. Let's look at that word for a minute. What is taqwa? Do be spreading Islam. That's one form of taqwa. And our action doing like Islamic way, praying yes. and doing good things, people learn from us, our children learn from us. Yes. For the love of God. Love of God, very good. I want to break it down a little more for you, inshallah. And I may need some help here, Yunus. Taqwa arrives or derives from the Arabic word wakayaki. Waka Yaki. Waka means protector or shield, and Itaka means to protect oneself. Am I protecting my physical body in fasting? Both. But is my intention to protect my physical body? No. No. Because it's for a law, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Therefore, taqwa is a noun derived from that meaning which means to shield or protect oneself. What do we need to protect ourselves from? Evil impulses. Evil impulses. Very good. The shaitan. Very good. Temptations. Temptation. So from the passion of the nafs. Now, Imam Ghazali, Rahimatullah, describes the nafs as the following. I, I just love this stuff. I'm in love with this stuff. Imam Ghazali is alive. No, he's been dead, uh, I forgot what year right now, it's not with me, but he's been dead for a long time. Yeah. Hundreds of years. Um, words, naf, ruh, call, and aql, explained by Imam Ghazali. Call has got two meanings. It means first a piece of flesh in the left breast called heart, which is hollow in the interior, which is filled up with black blood, and which is again a source of ruth or life. Heart is the center or line for circulation of blood. The detailed description of heart is to be found in anatomy. It exists in breast and lower animals and appertains to the material world. We shall not refer to it in this lesson. The second meaning of called is soul, with which we are concerned here. It is an immaterial thing or formless latifa, or basic subtle element, which has got connection with the material heart. It is just like unseen electricity. It is the principal thing in a man. It catches knowledge of God and spiritual world. It is punished and rewarded. The connection of soul with heart is the connection of attributes with the body, limbs, or a machine with the machine man, or a house with its inmates. The conclusion is of two kinds. One kind of connection is with ulumi mukashafa, or spiritual knowledge, ulum, Translation sometimes throw you. Ulum Mukashifa or spiritual knowledge. But in this book our object is to narrate Ulum Mu'amala or knowledge of worldly usage. Its second connection requires the knowledge of the secrets of the soul. The prophet did not throw light on this subject and so we should refrain from it. We shall translate the word called in this book as soul or an immaterial thing. This defines ruh and then nafs. And I want to read those two definitions and move on inshallah. But I think it's important for you to hear it from another source, to reinforce, to um, validate what we've been talking about. Ruh, it has got also two meanings. It means first a material thing within the heart which vibrates the whole body like the current of electricity and which runs through the veins of the body. It is called life. It has got the power of touch, hearing, sight, and smell. You can be spiritually deaf. You can be spiritually blind. It is just like radiation of light of a lighted lamp pitched in a corner of the house. It is a subtle gas or steam which creates the heart, the heat of the heart. Our object is not that. The second meaning of ruh is an immaterial, subtle thing which is called soul and not life. God says they ask you about ruh. Say it is a command from my Lord. You see, Adam, I talk about us being this, this 
disgusting fluids and then Allah breathed a soul into us. Yeah. Adam was clay. Anybody ever tried to grow anything on clay? Pretty hard to do, right? It was lifeless. And God in His mercy breathed into that clay and gave life to Adam. Adam, prior to that, but he didn't have any value. He was just like a statue. But when God breathed his rule into Adam, he said to the angels, prostrate to Adam. Do you think Allah would have asked the angels to prostrate to Adam if he hadn't imbued him with a soul? You see, my brothers and sisters, what gives you value in life is that soul. It is out of that soul that your essence, your countenance appears. When you die, people will say he was a good old soul or she was a good old soul. Or they'll say that was a miserable soul. Or that was the one gossipy soul. Am I right or wrong? How many people have heard this? Raise your hand. You never heard anyone referred to as a soul? In the South, it's very common. They don't even say, God bless her soul. Yeah. <laughs> bless her soul. Bless his soul. Bless his yeah, bless his heart. So, I just want to read the definition of naps and we will move on. How many people are awake and alive and, and inspired by this this morning? Woohoo! I'm delighted. Oh, okay. Some of us went to a wedding and didn't get home to 12.30 or 1 this morning, so 